How good was prime Carmelo Anthony? In this video, we're going to do a deep dive on Melo's film from 2011 through 2014, and we're going to try to figure out just how good he was. So with Melo, the first place where we have to start is his isolation scoring. And with this part of his game, there's three main elements that made Anthony almost impossible to cover one-on-one. -on -one. And that was his shooting, strength, and footwork. Now we'll start off by looking at Melo's shooting because this lays the foundation for the rest of his game. Now when playing in isolation, a vast majority of Melo's jumpers came in the mid-range. Anthony had both a high release point and great lift on his jumper, allowing him to simply rise up and get a shot off over mismatches. But Melo also had a lot more in his game besides just shooting over shoulder defenders. When playing in the mid post, Melo had a ridiculous feel of where the defense was leaning and he could leverage that to create countless of buckets. On this play, you'll see Butler heavily leaning on Anthony right on the catch. So Melo immediately pivots over towards the baseline, causing Butler to fold over, which gives Anthony a clean window to get this jumper off. Now with his back to the basket, Anthony had your typical MJ and Kobe bag, simply being able to work his man down to spots and turn into smooth fadeaways. And Anthony had the ability to turn and shoot over both of his shoulders, which allowed him to layer counters into this part of his game. This was one of Melo's favorite moves, where he steps his right foot out to shift the defense out of his frame. Then he turns over his left shoulder for the jumper. Now from these spots, Melo also liked to add all sorts of different variations to his scoring. Another one of his go-tos was putting his right shoulder into the defense, then punching off his right foot for a step back. You'll see him again here plant that right foot to separate, but now he brings his knee up Dirk style as he fades away. Now what's really scary is that there's a whole nother dimension to Melo's mid-post scoring, and that's his face-up game. So when Anthony is playing with his back to the basket, he's overall pretty quick and deliberate with making his move and getting right to his shot. However, when Melo faces up, he plays way more patient and calculated. He likes to both read his man and the entire floor. But again, from these spots, that underlying threat that Anthony always has is that simple jump shot. Now, this is where we have to start talking about Anthony's physical tools. Because when he faces up, he also loves to attack the basket and play downhill. Obviously, Melo is well known for being a bull and having a ridiculous amount of strength. But, I also think an underrated part of Anthony's game is his quickness. He obviously doesn't have great open court speed, but in tight spaces he could explode and attack angles really well. You'll see him here match up with point guard Damian Lillard, and watch how Anthony simply rips through to get the outside angle and blow right past him. This was one of Melo's favorite face-up moves, where he squares himself up with the defense, then he punches his right foot back to explode downhill. And what sets this move up is Anthony's pull-up shooting threat. Notice on this play how elevated Melo's man is, which again opens up an easy angle for him to attack. Now in the same way Anthony used his shooting to set up his downhill attacking, he also used his downhill attacking to set up his shooting. Because defenders were so worried about Melo putting his head down, Anthony could calmly create a ton of space with just a simple jab step. Notice on this play how much space Anthony creates with just a simple step forward. And again, what really ties all this together is Melo's patience when he faces up. Because he has countless of scoring options in his game, all he has to do is take what the defense gives him. Right here, you'll see him turn to square up with his man, and notice how much space he has from this spot. So Anthony just gets to a quick jab step and elevates for an easy jumper. So the next thing we have to go over is Melo's strength. And obviously his size allowed him to bully and physically overwhelm a variety of matchups. You'll see him here playing one-on-one -on -one with a prime LeBron. And Anthony has no problem working him below the block and creating an easy bank shot. But on top of playing bully ball, Anthony also had great stability and body control when working his way to spots. Melo was literally like a rock in the mid post, and it was pretty much impossible for the defense to knock him off balance. On this play, notice how much space Anthony creates by turning and putting his shoulder into Crowder, which knocks him back and gives Melo a window to rise up. Anthony also loved to face up to then put the ball down and transition into a post move. And again, notice in all these clips how Melo is able to initiate heavy contact while maintaining his balance. 
right here you'll see the defense up and in anthony's space but watch how Melo is going to step through with this inside pivot and explode to the baseline and when he gets into his jumper notice how stable and on balance he is now when Melo was matched up against a big or anybody that he couldn't physically overwhelm that's when he would open up his bag off the dribble now Anthony doesn't have super crazy Kyrie like handles, but he does have a good set of simple and effective moves off the bounce. One of his go to's was his right to left crossover. Notice how he shifts his way from his left to right foot to sell the downhill drive. Then he crosses it attacking the defense's top foot. You'll see him here hit the same move off a jab step, and he completely shifts Paul George all the way out of his frame. And again, Melo was really good at reading the defense's feet and attacking angles. Watch him here put his eyes up to lift the defense out of their stance. Then he attacks the top foot for an easy blow by. So like you all probably know, Anthony also did a ton of damage from 3. And a vast majority of these looks came off the catch and the flow of the game. Melo was an elite spot up shooter, having no fat in his mechanics. Being able to rip off spot up 3's in the blink of an eye. Now Melo also generated some threes off the dribble, calmly being able to walk his man down below the line and just rise up into open space. Anthony also loved using these left hand hezzy pull ups, where he skips and replants off his right foot, then steps into a left right shot. Now so far, we've gone over that Melo is an elite 3 level score, and when it comes to individual bucket getting, Anthony in his prime was clearly one of the best to do it. However, let's now get into some more dicey parts of Melo's game. So there's two main parts of Anthony's game that I want to go over. The first being his passing, and the second being his defense. Now as a playmaker, I think Carmelo gets way too much hate from the basketball community. Because for the Knicks, Melo primarily played the smaller power forward. He was never a ball dominant heliocentric player like LeBron, Luka, or James Harden. So he's not going to have those same ridiculous assist numbers that all those other guys have. And from the film I watched, I would objectively say that Melo is an above average passer. He was willing to make the simple play and hit open teammates. Most of Anthony's reads weren't super dynamic, but if he was able to draw attention from the defense, he was able to make the right play. When Carmelo was isolating in the post, the Knicks loved to run some off ball screening action, and Anthony consistently read the floor effectively and made the right play. I also think Melo's pick and roll passing is extremely underrated, being able to zip one hand pocket passes off the dribble with either hand. This dime right here is low key tough, where Melo hits a left hand pass right off the dribble. Anthony also had the ability to probe and pull two defenders towards him to then set up lobs at the rim. So overall I feel like Anthony had some pretty good passing chops, but there were for sure some weaknesses that he had too. Now Melo like we went over is a willing passer, but at the same time once he makes up his mind that he's going to go get a bucket, he completely stops reading the floor, and his passing threat pretty much disappears, which allows teams to send multiple bodies at him without much fear of Anthony punishing them with his passing. If you're a Knicks fan, I'm sure you're used to seeing a lot of plays like this, where Anthony plows into the deep paint and pulls almost the entire defense in with them, but he fails to make the right pass out. Now it is tough for me to just outright say that all these plays are bad, because there were plenty of times where Melo could take on the entire defense and still find success. Like here he attacks into the middle and pulls three defenders in. The right play from here is clearly to Shumpert in the corner, but he's still able to draw the foul and put himself on the free throw line. But I think Anthony failing to consistently make these reads really hurt his productivity in the playoffs. Because again it allowed opposing teams defenses to really zone up and force Anthony into tougher shots. And I think that's one of the reasons Carmelo's efficiency commonly dropped in the postseason. Now when it comes to Melo's defense, he was just flat out not good. To start off, Anthony had really poor mobility, which caused him to constantly get blown by in scramble situations. Carmelo simply did not have the foot speed to close out and contain the ball, causing him to get blown by like a traffic cone when shifting towards the ball. Opposing teams also like to target Anthony and pick and roll, and again his foot speed really became a problem when he was extended out beyond the paint. Another issue with Anthony was his overall intensity. There were many times where he outright just took plays off, or he was oblivious to what was going on. And also take note that all these clips were in the playoffs. On this play, you'll see David West completely lose Melo with a shot fake, 
causing Tyson Chandler to slide over to take away the drive. From here, Anthony needs to rotate down and put a body on Hebert, but Melo gives little to no resistance, allowing the offensive rebound and dunk. So obviously, Melo had holes in his game, and these issues for sure became more apparent in the postseason. But basketball is still a team game, and the best team pretty much always wins. And in my opinion, I don't think the Knicks ever built a championship quality team with Melo in his prime years. And while sure there were flaws in Anthony's game, I still don't think it's fair for him to be labeled as a non-winner. If you enjoyed the video, please like, subscribe, and let me know in the comments who the kids should break down next. The kids here.